morning and welcome to Bethesda Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you are here. Uh, my name is Jim Davis. I'm your, your new pastor. Uh, I am awful gl glad to be here uh, on behalf of the worship team this morning. I want to thank you for um, to worshiping with us and thank you uh, for uh, tuning in and uh, sharing uh, God's joy. Let us worship God. Uh, while the, our worship services and all our on-site activities have been canceled for the month of April, that doesn't mean that we can't um, meet in a new way uh, in, in uh, coming into your home uh, in this manner. Uh, so follow us on Facebook, uh, tune in on our YouTube channel, go to our webpage, uh, look for our email updates, give us a call on how to connect with us. If you have any questions, uh, your dedicated staff is in place. Uh, with that, we invite uh, Brent to come forward for this morning's uh, announcements. Good morning, Bethesda Church family. Uh, just know that we miss you. And uh, we look forward to the day where we can come back together and worship our great God. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to worship together, separately, connecting via live stream. Thank you for tuning in. We, we do pray and have been praying for this service and that you would experience God's love and his powerful presence wherever you are as you worship him with us. Uh, this morning. I just want to reiterate what Pastor Jim has already said. We are closed the church offices uh, for the remainder of the month following the uh, wise counsel of the government officials, uh, healthcare professionals, and the leadership. So um, uh, please, if you have a need, just know that your staff uh, will do everything we can to help meet that need, but the church offices uh, will remain closed at least through the remainder of April. Uh, Cindy Bolin, our director from Bethesda Christian School, they have a caring project this month. And what they have asked the children to do is to make cards to give to the Karish Wing residents. And they are doing just that. They have shared a couple of pictures with us that we want to share with you. So hopefully you can see this from home and see a couple of our children and the work that they have been doing this week to send to the Karish Wing residents. It touched our hearts, blessed our hearts, and we trust that God's going to use this little gift uh, to encourage the hearts of our Cares Wing residents. Thank you, fam BCS families, uh, for doing that and for ministering uh, to the Cares Wing residents. Now, we do ask that you go to the Bethesda Christian School Facebook page to view photos of our students and our staff sharing activities during the absence from school. There are several Bethesda Christian School pages, so make sure you find ours, which has the background in place. Also, Bethesda Christian School is accepting uh, registrations for next school year, as well as applications for the director position, as Ms. Cindy Bowling is, Bolin is retiring after this school year at the end of May. Also, if anyone has food uh, donations for Sacks of Love, that ministry is continuing each and every week. Please call the church office or Dee Blank says you can call her. She's the coordinator. Uh, if you don't have her number, please call the church office and we will gladly give that to you. Uh, again, we are uh, a church that prayerfully and financially supports the one great hour of sharing. Uh, we have been a strong prayerful presence and a financial supporter for this wonderful work of ministry. To date, we have only collected $295 towards our 1,000 church goal. Uh, I know that our world has certainly and drastically changed from where we were a year ago, and that giving might be a little more um, difficult uh, or strenuous uh, for many of us, but we do ask that you consider giving to this wonderful ministry, this wonderful work where these funds will be used for good and for God's glory. And this is the last week that we'll, we will be taking uh, donations for um, one great hour of sharing. So please mail in uh, your check made out to Bethesda Presbyterian Church and mark it one great hour of sharing and mail it to the church office. Now hopefully you have uh, the email of the bulletin that Johnny Deal mailed out to you. It has our order of worship. If you'll go ahead and get that so that you may follow along uh, as we go to God in worship, we'd be grateful of, for that. Um, but also just know that celebrating the love and majesty of God is essential 
to being a Christian and maintaining a joyful and grateful heart. The Bible calls us to worship and to praise the glory of God. May this time of worship, reflection, praise, and celebration be a worthy response to God's love and his sacrifice for us. Let us call ourselves to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Let, Let us worship, worship the Lord this day. day. Let us join our voices together in one voice now. Let us confess our sins before our good God. Friends, let us pray. With new life all around us, O oh gracious God, we still cling to old ways. We hear our confession of sin and doubt as we struggle to understand your will for our lives during this time in history. We confess that we remain captive to our sinfulness and selfish desires. Through Christ as the sacrificial lamb, you shattered the power of sin and death. Help us to honor you in Christian discipleship, witness and service to our neighbors. Your voice comes from heaven to hasten and discipline those whom you've called through the ages. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain in us a willing spirit so that we may receive salvation through Jesus Christ. Let us take time for silence and personal confession. Amen. We have been redeemed by the risen Lord of our salvation. Our, our sins, sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. This is the moment uh, where we would come together, uh, pass the plate, uh, take up an offering, uh, talk a little bit about uh, your tithing, uh, our service to our brothers and sisters, 
Um, but we also need to take a moment um, in prayer. As you know, we've used uh, music in uh, many ways uh, in our church, and music sings something to the human heart um, that no other thing that can uh, convey. Um, we are so blessed to uh, have uh, Bo uh, and so many instrumentalists uh, in this church, and we look forward to having them uh, come and offer up their uh, talents, their, their gifts. And that's what this is, moment is about, is offering up uh, our gifts. Uh, for some of us, that means planting flowers. For some of us, that means uh, f turning a nut bolt uh, or hammering a nail, uh, and others n simply uh, showing up. Uh, and we would ask that you would show up in many ways, more specifically while you're uh, at home, uh, sheltering in place. We ask that you would um, give, you would tithe, tithe your uh, prayers uh, for not only the Bethesda Church and uh, the staff and your new pastor, uh, but tithe your prayers for its ministries. Uh, the Sacks of Love, um, the local ministries in Camden, the larger regional and national ministries um, that uh, these monies go to uh, on from a don denominational standpoint, uh, and w as well as the world. So uh, while I don't like to ask for money, um, but your gifts, no matter how big or small, uh, goes to helping folks um, for this pandemic, this very serious thing that uh, m most of us would, would have never guessed that would have happened in our lives. Uh, so uh, please give. Give freely. Give with a cheerful heart. Uh, and um, give not only uh, of your prayers, uh, of your resources, uh, but of your time, your talents. Give of your love. Um, hug your family uh, as you're sheltering in place. That's okay. Uh, but uh, we would ask that you would continue to uh, be a good steward with what God hath given us and um, that we might uh, go out and proclaim um, the Lord's love in new and exciting ways. With that, we uh, now uh, remind ourselves of who we are and what we're doing in the Apostles' Creed. Uh, we would invite you uh, to uh, uh, say along with what we believe. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Uh, it is my pleasure uh, to um, invite uh, Lisa Davis to come forward for uh, this morning's children ministry moment. Good morning. I'm so glad that you could join us this morning. Um, last week, I talked to the ch children about an Easter surprise, and we did a little bit of imaginary time travel. Well, it reminded me, some of you guys, some of the children might have seen some of our, the Superbook episodes that we watch sometimes, and it is a boy and a girl and their robot that go back to biblical times and um, see Bible stories. Well, I hope we all know that the boy and the girl and the robot are pretend, just like our imaginary time travel was. But the Bible stories are very, very real and true. So, that being said, let's do our little super book travel this morning. So, kids, get in your time travel, our silent, invisible time travel machine. It's a week after Easter. We're going to go back and see what, what's happening there now a week after Easter, okay? You ready? All right. Well, here we are. We're in a locked room. The disciples are all here. What, the, what are they talking about? Oh, they're fearful. They're fearful that, well, that's why the door's bolted. The Romans might come in and arrest them. Well, what are they saying to Thomas? They're trying to convince him that last week on Easter evening, they saw Jesus in a locked room. 
He ate with them and talked with them? Thomas is having nothing to do with it. Oh, no. Mm -mm. He didn't believe in them. Unless he sees them, him on his own, unless he sees his nail-pierced hands, unless he touches his pierced side, no, Thomas isn't going to believe it. Okay, well, they're still talking. Wait, what's that? Is that a ghost? No, that is Jesus, real, live, in the flesh, Jesus. And Thomas sees him. Oh, boy, look at Thomas. Look at Jesus. Wow, do y'all see it? Thomas believes. He sees his doubts are gone and he believes. What is Jesus saying to him? Oh, Jesus is saying, Thomas, you believe because you see. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Okay, guys, that was a great time travel. You know what? We're not going to sit here and bash Thomas, doubting Thomas, okay? Or as the kids tell me, we're not going to burn Thomas. We're not going to roast Thomas, okay? You know what? We all doubt. We, you might actually doubt God, or maybe you just doubt his forgiveness. Maybe you doubt yourself or your ability to do something. Um, maybe it's just one area of your life that you doubt God can really handle. Or maybe you doubt that he can still love you if he knows that one thing about you. Well, you know what? It reminds me also of this father who wanted to heal his son, and he came to Jesus. And you know what he said? He said, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Well, that sounds a little strange. I believe, but help me with my unbelief? You know what? I think the Father was saying that I have faith, but I know in this area my faith is weak, so please, Jesus, help me strengthen it. Well, may we all do that as we go about our areas of doubt. May, may we be like Thomas. May we be like this Father. May we ask Jesus to help us believe. Will you pray with me? Bow your hand. Bow your head. Fold your hands and pray with me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for Thomas. Thank you, thank you for Thomas. Thomas. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping us with our unbelief. With our unbelief. Thank you for doubts. Thank you for doubts as they lead us to you. As they lead us to you. So, dear God, so dear God, help me. Help me with my unbelief. With my unbelief. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, BYG at Bethesda Youth Group. I'm John Gardner, leader of Bethesda's youth ministry here at this beautiful, historic Bethesda Presbyterian Church. What a beautiful day this is. I'm going to take off my mask while I deliver my message to our young people today, but I hope you're still practicing your social distancing and staying home. I know I haven't seen many of you out and about, so I'm, I'm sure that you're practicing good things during this um, time of pandemic, and I'm proud of you for doing that. But what a beautiful day this is, rain or shine, there's no high like the most high. So I was reading this week Galatians 2.20, and it says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There is no more loving act that can ever be done than God sacrificing his son Jesus for us. My old self has been crucified with Christ. That means there's a new self. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me made me wonder, how much do I allow Christ to live in me? I was on a recent road trip with my daughter, which I will not name so that you know it's, I can't throw her under the bus, and we went to an unknown area in the upstate, or unknown to me. And we're smarter than GPS, so we ignored when she kept telling us to take the exit that was 11 miles up. Um, my youngest daughter said, take this exit take this exit so 
I turned off GPS and I said, well, let's do it. So I took the exit. And what could go wrong? Um, you know, she knows way better than a $40,000 truck. I mean, it's a truck. It's a piece of machinery. I was tired of hearing, make a legal U-turn. So I decided to listen to my youngest daughter, and we were right outside of Greenville. Turn left, take an immediate right, go this way, no, go that way, turn around. We ended up in this mega suburban neighborhood, and it went on for acres and acres and acres. And my thought was, if I turn right three times, it'll take me back to where we began. But no, not in that neighborhood. Um, we got so turned around. but. I figured she was going to her new home. She's been there at least a dozen times. So anyway, it was not a great car ride. Um, in the not so long past, cars wouldn't tell you where to go. Toyota gave us specific directions on how to get there and we didn't listen. I think that correlates to um, Galatians very well. Um, before you accept Christ, you wander through this world. Because of his sacrifice and his crucifixion, he is inside of us. That's what the scripture says. He is now inside of us. He has a road map to glorify and worship his Father as he is our Lord and Savior. We just have to listen. So many of us want Jesus Christ as our Savior. I mean, who doesn't desire eternal life? But how many of us live as if Christ is our Lord on this earth? A Lord is someone having power or authority or influence, a master or ruler. Do we listen to our Lord? Do we allow him to be the power and authority in our life? Do we try to drive through our life on earth without listening to his direction? Listening to his direction. Do we spend time in the word? Is it enough time in the word to understand the direction? Unless you're immersed daily, the answer is no. I feel that this life is a journey. We must listen to Jesus to be successful as we journey to salvation. So don't turn off the GPS called the Bible. Let it lead your life. All right, BYG, I want to make a couple of announcements real quick. Please watch your email and text as I'm learning how to do a virtual meeting called Zoom. And I'm sure some of you are laughing because you think all you got to do is turn it on. But it takes someone like me a little while to master it and figure out what raising a hand and how to look at all the different people on the... Anyway, I'm learning. And I hope we can meet this week. Also, tune in to Montreat Now this Thursday at 7 o'clock. I'll send you reminders. And I miss you guys and just want you to know, if we can't meet together in church, we're going to meet together virtually. So I hope all of you will tune in and sign on and follow the directions and join me. I hear it's not that hard, but we're going to do it together. But God bless you. Keep reaching out, reaching out to those who need your help and your guidance and, and just continue to be the hands and feet of the Lord. Let him be your Lord and your Savior. Amen. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you, John. Thank you for what you're doing for the, the kingdom of God. And uh, I just really appreciate you as fellow staff workers and and what you're doing for the kingdom of God. So thank you very much. Now we're going to transition into our uh, scripture lesson. It is taken from Acts chapter 5 verses 27 through 32. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. You here, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Amen. And now we go to our morning prayer and the Lord's Prayer. But before we do, I do want to ask church family, please remember the family of uh, Laura, Laura Stevenson, 
who lost her mother this past week. The funeral was Tuesday, so be praying for that family. And then also, Carolyn Drake's sister, Barbara Cecil, had a terrible fall. She has severely damaged her eye and is losing that eye, and they're going to have to take it out, remove it. And uh, obviously, she's having a difficult time with uh, knowing that she's lost her eyesight. So please pray for Barbara Cecil, Carolyn Drake's sister, and that family as well. Let's go to God's throne of grace. Almighty and loving and eternal God, on this first Sunday after Easter, the light of your love shines on. Your light has come into the world, and neither darkness nor evil nor even death itself can overcome it. And we, like Mary, like Peter that we just read about, other disciples, even doubting Thomas, have been made witnesses to the resurrection story, wondering, hoping, rejoicing, and sometimes doubting. Lord, we ask that you renew our minds, our hearts, and our lives for the days ahead. We pray for your refreshing over us. Keep your words of truth and love planted firmly within us and help us to keep focused on what is pure and what is right and give us the power to be obedient to your word. Shine your light in us and through us. Omnipotent God, we know that everything is in your sovereign control, and we ask that you keep this coronavirus from continuing to spread. Lord Jesus, during your ministry on earth, you showed your great power and care by healing people of all ages and stations of life from physical, mental, and spiritual ailments. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Lord, we ask that you take away the fear and anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine, as well, of all, as, well as all of us who are sheltering in. Grant us your powerful presence that offers hope, peace, comfort, strength, and love. And omniscient God, we ask that our government officials, healthcare professionals, and leaders at every level seek your wisdom daily. Be with those making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families, our communities, our country, and the wider world. We pray that they communicate clearly, truthfully, and calmly with each other and the public, and that their messages are received and heeded. May truth and empathy be the touchstones of people setting policies for our protection. Now, Lord, as we lift up the prayer request of our Bethesda Church family, Lord, we do so knowing that you are the great physician and mighty healer and that you promise to be close to the brokenhearted. So now we lift up all those who are ill, whether in mind, body, or spirit, and ask you to speed healing and restore strength. We lift up Mr. and Mrs. Weber, Ms. Marshall, Mr. and Mrs. Sinclair, Ms. Coombs, Ms. Sanders, Mr. and Mrs. Barfield, Mrs. Bradley, Mrs. Biddle, Mrs. Jones. Lord, we lift up Mr. and Mrs. Outlaw, Mrs. Goodwin, Ms. Dixon, Mrs. Tatum, Mrs. Derringer, Ms. Whitman, and Mr. and Mrs. Martin. We continue to remember and lift up the family of Jack West, the family of Laura Stevenson with the passing of her mother, and of course, Barbara Cecil, Carolyn Drake's sister, recovering from this terrible fall and recovering from surgery, including the loss of her eye and thus her eyesight. We bring these petitions to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray together the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Brent. Well done, good and faithful servant. Our second scripture uh, this morning comes from uh, John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were, uh, where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. He had said this. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but there are, uh, are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let, uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we come here before you this morning. We are yours, yet we stray. Oh Lord, there are pieces in us that are broken. There are things that we still stress over and let fear overcome our souls. Lord, come into us this day. Send your Holy Spirit into us that where our eyes might open, that the eyes of our hearts might see your path, the path that you call for us. Lord, we ask that you would Bless the words from my mouth. May they be pleasing unto you, O God. Bless the meditation and the message this morning that all may hear and encounter your love, your grace, your truth in a new way. Lord, we pray these things in our Lord's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. In John 20, uh, there's so much here. Uh, the disciples uh, are huddling in fear. Uh, Jesus appearing to them um, in, in, with the greeting, peace be with you. Uh, Jesus sends, uh, sends them and empowers them and commands them as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, and if you forgive the sins, uh, they're forgiven. Uh, if you retain the sins, they're retained. Jesus has empowered the disciples here. Thomas, a.k.a. Doubting Thomas, I think that's a bad rap, uh, who wasn't in the group uh, when Jesus appeared to him, uh, he wants to see he was left out. And then Acts 5, we hear uh, the reason why the disciples were huddling in fear. And we hear a newfound confidence now, of even boldness in the disciples in comparison. Um, Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God. We must obey God. Christian witness to the good news is contained in these verses, these four verses uh, in Acts 5, uh, 29 through 32. In John 20, the human condition in response to God is revealed. It's a familiar story, really. Time and time again, we see the Bible. Someone or uh, a group who has been called by God to stand up and represent 
and with fear and doubt and anxiety, hesitation, unrest, and all the other crippling things that we humans get fettered by. This is the result of our own sin. Our own sin and temptation from uh, the destroyer. The great tempter, Satan, as we know. What's important for us, though, to remember is that the disciples are people just like us. They are messy and complex human beings dealing with their own stuff and their own sinfulness. Their story is our story. We are one and the same with the disciples. It's good to know that some of the disciples are uh, a little boneheaded, uh, a, a phrase from my, from my past, uh, as the, some used to say. The disciples are human with their own brokenness, and some can't see past their own sins. In, um, in John and Acts, let's take a look. Uh, they... For me, they're kind of bookends for the story of the maturation of the disciples. It takes a place, uh, there's an infusion, if you will. Um, there's a newfound confidence in the disciples. Uh, and they grow up, so to speak, um, spiritually. This passage where they huddle in fear, well, they're in fear of the Jewish temple guard, the enforcers. Um, you know, we think sometimes Jewish temple guards might be, you know, kind of the, the, uh, the road, the crossing guard guy with the sign um, for the, the uh, church, the Jewish church uh, back then. But, yeah, that's not it at all. The, if they had guns, they would have carried them. They had spears. They had knives. Um, they uh, had uh, well-scarred fists and hands, and they doled out uh, brutality on the half, behalf of uh, the Jewish temple. Jesus was cutting in on the power base of the Jewish temple and the guards, the priests, even the Pharisees uh, will have none of it. Uh, so Jesus appears to the disciples and offers up these words, peace and Holy Spirit. And oh, by the way, you have a job to do. And he calls them to go and do. Do you ever wonder why he says peace be with you so many times? Or how about how important the Holy Spirit is? Or why does Jesus call us to go and do? What's so unreasonable about Thomas' request? You know, the others got to see him. They didn't ask to see. Um, why couldn't uh, he also? He was left out. I think for some of us, Thomas gets a bad rap. Um, we like to point at the finger at Thomas and say, oh, he's doubting Thomas, and that's the, the rap he gets throughout the, the uh, centuries. Um, but there's something else going on here. Why did Jesus say, you, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. Belief is not based on what the eyes perceive but what the heart knows to be true. Several movies I like to quote, um, that there's a, um, I think it's Curly Sue, really old Jim Belushi movie. But Curly Sue is there and trying to prove that um, she loves him and that they should be together. He kind of adopted her. And they, they get her up on the witness stand, and she's only like seven or eight. And the lawyer um, talks about, you know, proving um, that you love. And she says, you know, you, you can't prove love. You know, if you believe in a, um, uh, in a million dollars, but have you ever seen it before? Um, you can't prove love. You feel it. You show it. You share it. It's something the human heart does and recognizes. This is why Jesus has called us to faith. Belief in God with our eyes cannot confirm, um, yet our soul yearns for it. This is why Jesus states a blessing 
for all believers who have come to know God without visual confirmation. Doubting Thomas and uh, the fearful disciples are what we encounter here and know oh so well through our Sunday school lessons. But yet then on Acts 5, where Peter and the disciples find this newfound strength and resolve, where does it come from? Here they are standing in front of the very people that they huddled in fear of back in John. Now they speak with courage and clarity, speaking of things such as obedience, authority, the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Messiahship or Mashiahship of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, repentance, witnessing the gift of the Holy Spirit. Where did this all come from? Well, there's this little known thing uh, that folks have uh, done for the last uh, thousand years or so. And, and we know the, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then there's Acts. And, you know, uh, most of us know Luke wrote uh, Luke as well as Acts. Uh, but Acts gets a very interesting phrase. It's the Gospel of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' earthly ministry ceased and the Holy Spirit's ministry began. In Acts, here is that turning point, that flag on the side of the road that says something is different. Something is joyful, and we've been given a gift. These, are the, these two uh, texts are the bookends for that very thing. Acts, the book of Acts. Uh, you got to love it. I love the... Uh, the, the tone at which uh, Luke wrote Acts. Um, it is uh, gripping, and I dare you to go back and reread Acts with, um, with inserting uh, the Holy Spirit uh, in all the movement, all the verbs. There's some good news here. It's not an arbitrary story that's supposedly happened 2,000 years ago. The gospel is not just a doctrine we've come up with that leads to good living and better way to treat each other. Jesus Christ as Lord and our Savior is not something we cooked up um, by some Jewish sect or great speaker or philosopher of days gone by. The Son of God has come to earth and has redeemed our souls. It's why we can come here and smile, be joyful, maybe even joke with each other at times. We're saved, folks. And if you don't know that in your heart, then please reach out to us. Reach out to me or Brent or any one of the staff, uh, any one of the elders of the church. We want to come beside you, pray with you, and be your, your, um, your friend and confidant in your walk with Christ. Reach out. The world we live in is full of fear, full of doubt, disclaimers, down talkers, naysayers, sin, misinformation, and pure ignorance. We, have faced, we are faced with people every day that tell us religion is for the weak-minded. Christ is just a myth. God doesn't really exist. And if he did one time, well, God is surely dead now. In today's world, Jesus Christ is used as an expressive term or ex expletive. God is used casually in vain like terms OMG. The Bible is just a loose work of literature with some historical value. Pastors and ministers are almost always portrayed in Hollywood as bumbling, impotent, antique, or uh, who never connect with today's society. And the gospel is always just a musical genre. We've lost our way. We speak of the gospel in church and in conversation because it's the single most greatest thing ever done forever throughout all of history, except for maybe, maybe creation itself. God allowing us to exist and then guaranteeing our eternal salvation through Jesus Christ is a big, big deal. 
And by Acts chapter 5, Peter, the once fearful disciple, is now standing up before the very people who orchestrated the death of Jesus and proclaiming the gospel message in a full and Trinitarian way. Jesus shows up to the, God, the disciples and speaks, peace be with you. Jesus has empowered the disciples. Why peace be with you? Because belief in God is enough to affect peace and joy within each and every one of us. The peace that Jesus speaks of is always a component of God, God's grace. Peace without God's grace is simply the lack of war. We forget God's unconditional love for us. We like God to fit in a nice little box so we can uh, figure him uh, into our um, equation for how we're going to do life. But God is far greater than any box that you have. What's important about the Holy Spirit? Jesus shows up with disciples and delivers the Holy Spirit to the disciples, empowers them, and great things will come. This thing called Pentecost we'll be talking about in a few Sundays. Why does Jesus call the disciples to go and do? Because you can't be a Christian in a closet. The disciples now have the peace of God in their hearts and are empowered by the Holy Spirit as instruments of God. So they should just sit on the couch and watch TV? I think not. There are missionaries, there are stories about missionaries who have gone out in the middle of nowhere and found tribes who have been untouched for millennia. And then when the missionaries speak of God, the, the tribe says, oh, that's the word for God. We've always wondered what it was. We knew God was here and God moved. We just didn't know God's name. Thank you. God can show up on a deserted island. But if you're hiding in a closet, you've made a decision not to be part of God's plan. Perhaps Thomas just wanted to be included the knowledge that the other disciples were given. I'm sympathetic to Thomas, I think. Um, we all want to be with the in crowd. We all want to see it uh, ourselves and be the first. But the truth is, we all can't be first. We all want to be included in what's happening and I have to admit, if I were Thomas, I would have probably done the same thing. I think doubting Thomas is bad rap laid on him for, after all, he didn't doubt and do nothing. Thomas believed, went on to preach the gospel in uh, uh, Parthia and India, would go on to excite the, the rage of pagan priests, and would die a martyr's death by being killed with a spear from a pagan priest's hand. We must obey God rather than any human authority, Jesus says. Even though we feel sometimes like fear, the fearful disciples of uh, John 20, Jesus calls us to be disciples, to be fearless disciples, to the glory, to the gospel, and the resurrection. We are called to be disciples with the peace of God in our hearts, empowered by the Holy Spirit as instruments of God. Yes, you are instruments of God. And not just sitting on a couch waiting for Gilligan's Island. And by the way, they're actors. They'll never leave the island. I'm sorry. <laughs> but a witness of the gospel to our friends, family, uh, co-workers, acquaintances, yes, even complete strangers. For the world surely is in need of the truth. And the truth is uh, we are all sinners and have fallen short of the glory of God. And it's only by the blood of Jesus, only by the blood of Jesus, will we be able to stand in front of our Lord and Savior. How much time do I have? Have we gone over? The other day, I, uh, my wife said I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I'm going to tell it. The other day, I, uh, we needed to re pl replace a few things in our bathrooms. Uh, the large porcelain thing that I was told by my wife I can't actually say. Um, uh, but uh, um, 
I, I was going to uh, talk a, a little bit about it, and in my trick, I went to three three Lowe's um, uh, home improvement stores, two Home De no, a Home Depot, and two Ace Hardwares, and, and I was wondering why it was such a big deal to, to, to find three of these, and, and I, I found out why. As I finally found the, 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 the three matching to uh, toilets, oh, I said it, it's out of, the, out of the bag. Sorry, Pat. In Lowe's parking lot, I was um, loading my, my, uh, my purchase in the back, and there were two fellows uh, standing there uh, talking and with the hood up on one of their pick on the pickup truck. And um, to make a long story medium, um, you know, most, most, some folks know I, I, I was, was raised um, to be a mechanic um, through high school in my first degree. So they asked if that I could give them a job, and, and so sure. And um, so I loaded up my, my purchase, put them in the truck, went over there, uh, raised my hood, and we connected the cables, and it did nothing. And, and uh, quickly I, I discerned what, what was going on, I had a bad connection, and he needed a nut uh, to um, complete a, a connection on, on this battery. I went to my toolbox that I always keep. I had one nut. It fit. Only one nut and it fit. So they asked me what I did after I'd asked them to do. And I said, well, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a new pastor in Camden at Bethesda. And, and they said, so, so what's it like being a, a pastor? How did you become a pastor? So uh, as I'm fixing the truck, I, I tell the story. And, and we fixed the, the car and I wasn't through with with the, the story, and um, the young man, Nick, um, asked me to finish my story. And the older fellow there um, quoted some scripture um, a after I quoted some scripture. You just never know where God's calling you to go and do. And I ended my brief conversation, and I'll probably never see him again. Brief conversation was, if you ever want to know what God wants you to do, pray a real prayer and get ready to listen. Because God will speak, whisper to those who, who hear really well spiritually, and will offer up a baseball bat for those who don't. Some of us need burning bushes. I get, I get a little bit of where Moses is coming from. Jesus calls us to go and do. And even in the midst of buying toilets, you can share the love of God and lives will change. I shook that man's hand because he wanted me to shake his hand. And then we used moist towelettes and blessed each other as we left. God shows up wherever you are. All you have to do is open your eyes and accept God in your life. Let's pray for them. Gracious God, we thank you. Thank you for even the, uh, the stories uh, in parking lots of um, home improvement stores. We thank you for the changing lives and calling the disciples um, to go and do, to encourage them, to imbibe in them the Holy Spirit, and then call them to go and do. Lord, help us to know that you've called us to go and do. As a church, as Bethesda Presbyterian Church, we are called to go and do. Even while we are sheltering in place, we can still go and do. We have resources. We can speak electronically um, over great distances now. We can move and shake in ways that no history has ever seen before in human history. Help us to be your people. Encourage us to step out on faith and go in outside of our comfort zone and proclaim your love. Lord, all we have to do is show up and you'll bless whatever that is. Lord, thank you for that. Help us to go and do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Now, O Lord, bless us. Convict our hearts. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may see you wherever we go. Lord, be in our words as we speak your love, grace, and truth. May we be imbibed by the Holy Spirit and inspired by Jesus Christ to know that we are yours here for a short time. Help us to make the most of it. Amen and amen.